Welcome to Tony Martinetti Nonprofit Radio coverage of Fundraising Day 2012. We're at the Marriott Marquis in Times Square, New York City, hosted by the Association of Fundraising Professionals, Greater New York City Chapter. My guest now is Paul Clolery. He is Vice President and Editorial Director of NPT Publishing Group, which includes Nonprofit Times and Exempt Magazine. Paul Clolery, welcome. Thanks, Tony. Glad to have you on the show. It's quite a crowd here. I think we're going to do a dunking booth next year. <laughs> uh, the only crowd is because Nonprofit Technology News, uh, I'm sorry, because Nonprofit Times is right next door. Right. You're the, you're the magnet. We're, the, we're just in your pocket. And people just throw things at me, so it's a lot easier. Well, because you, uh, you reject their pitches <laughs> routinely, right? But, uh, but you're in a nice way, I'm sure. No doubt. Um, you you uh, are seeing some trends in, uh, in events. Uh, they're getting bigger. They're getting costlier. So say a little about that. Well, what we've been seeing lately, not just in New York, but around the country, it seems like events are coming back strong this year, and the ticket prices are going up. I know in New York City, for example, a lot of organizations were trying to keep their events under $1,000 for the big gala. Mm-hmm. Now they're routinely at 1000 or more, and we're seeing that in the, just in the past four to five months. People are really starting to... Uh, realize that there's the economy is getting better at least here in New York and for the people who would frequent these types of events and uh, we're seeing also a lot of online bidding for extremely expensive items for to help organizations whether it be trips whether it be uh, top gun type bat, uh, air, airplane battles oh yeah it's really been okay. exciting to watch and this is not only in New York you said nationwide nationwide the prices are coming up and the people seem to be on the high end of the donor scale looking for adventure not okay. just not just to give money. Yeah, and um, are the uh, you mentioned online auctions. Is that has that been trending for a while? The auctions moving from something live or silent to online, or is that more recent too? Well, it's been building over the years, but now organizations are finding that they don't need a gala to have an online auction. So they can have it for months and months and lead up to a gala or let it go afterwards. And they're even doing it online with people's cell phones from the event, so people don't have to run back and forth to to the silent auction to sign their name. Oh, my God, 75 bucks. Here's another 50. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're doing it on their cell phones. And in some cases, they're being prompted by uh, by butlers to, who come to the table and say, Oh, by the way, your bid, sir, is, has been has been upped. Oh, Would you like to up your bid? Oh, and, interesting. Yeah, so organizations are finding lots of different ways to uh, to get the bidding going. That seems pretty sophisticated. Yeah. Your, your online bid has been has been challenged. Uh, would you like to would you like to reply? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And so, right, so since we're talking about um, technology, I have the current issue of Nonprofit Times. It's a publication that you're somewhat familiar with. A little bit, yeah. 18 years as uh, editor in chief. Yep. Um, future of technology donations is cloudy. What what's happening around this around mobile giving? Or? Well. Technology in the cloud. Um, organizations are we're so used to going to Gifts and Kind International or NAIR or some of the other pass-through entities where nonprofit organizations, uh, I'm sorry, for-profit companies like Microsoft or some of the other vendors in the industry would give product and then it would pass through to the, the, the charities. It would be a donation, mm-hmm. Gift and Kind. Well, the charities were used to getting the box. You'd say, oh, I want Microsoft Office, and they would send you the box. Right. Now it's all online. So everything is moving to the cloud, particularly uh, with when it comes to technology donations of, oh, okay. of software. Of I, mis- software. I misread your headline. I thought, uh, okay. See, uh, going uh, to the an, cloud. It's an ambiguous headline. Uh, who wrote the headline? It's hey, ambiguous. It's in, it's in quotes. <laughs> it's in quotes. It's a cloud well, technology. Cloud is in quotes. Oh, I see. Future of technology. So I misread it to think that it was mobile give, or it was giving. Okay. Um, so wh- what what can charities be asking for now from Microsoft, etc.? Well, what we're seeing, the, the products will stay the same. The difference is they're now selling site licenses or, or licensing s- seats rather than giving away the software. Okay. And what we're seeing now is a lot more will have to be spent probably on the side of putting it together in your office, uh, needing to uh, have a specialist in-house to craft the technology so that it works best for your organization. Nothing's in a box anymore. Right. Everything right. is okay. can be handcrafted. Everything can be uh, manipulated to what you need it to do. 
and there are so many bells and whistles these days from the various online vendors that, and the technology vendors that you can craft a piece of software or, or a piece of technology now. You're not getting the software yeah. To, yeah. to do anything that you need it to do. Okay. And, so, and so some of that consulting is available. Oh, yeah. And that's, and that, that's where it's going to start getting expensive because the consultants are not free. The software was always free. Yeah. The consultants were never free. Okay. And now when you download the software and you now have to configure it to your systems and, and, what, and have it work with what you're doing, that's now it's going to start getting expensive. Do you, uh, well, do you see the companies donating that consulting service as well? Uh, seeing uh-huh. any of that? Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. No. no, no. Okay. Not going that far. Okay. Um, beneath that one, let's see if I can read this one appropriately. Okay, right, I'll just read it. Vegas draws youths looking for meaningful relationships. Uh, meaningful relationships in Vegas. What? These are not. These are not the by the hour relationships. Well, no. The- oh, you know, I forgot to tell you to take that uh, gross thing off. Uh, no, it no. just it reflects. That's all. It's not gross. No, the AFP name tags are beautiful, but they reflect in our lights. Um, what about Vegas youthful relationships? Well, they're hoping what happens in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas. Okay. The whole point is to bring kids into um, a youth. Um, a, a, a friendly setting, a familiar setting, someplace that's a little bit exciting, and maybe they'll bring some of the what they learn back into their communities. The, in in this case, we're talking about Jewish community organizations, where they have been seeing some waning in youth development, in youths going back to their communities and building um, the Jewish community centers and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And what they're trying to do is bring folks into a, an exciting place like Vegas, hoping to build those friendships, helping to build those connections so that they can bring it back to their communities and help to build the next generation of Jewish communities. Okay. And uh, are, you, are you familiar at all? And if you're not, it's fine. Um, with the trend generally around youth engagement? Is, is it declining generally? Or I know this was just about the, the Jewish community organizations. Well, there's been a whole na- push for national service. And then not and not just community in your community, but nationally and internationally. Uh, I think it's next week, uh, either the next week or in the next two weeks, the National Service Conference is going to be out in Chicago. I mean, tens of thousands of people going to talk about how they can serve their communities better. It's a terrific conference put on by the Points of Light Institute uh, Corporation for National and Community Service, and they bring volunteers and volunteer managers in from all over the world, actually, to talk about how they can make those connections in their community, and it's really starting to build. National service is no longer a buzzword. But, but had we had we been seeing youth engagement declining? Well, no. I mean, it's starting to build now. Because it's building now. It's building right. now in the last five or six years. Okay. Um, you, you really saw it because kids had to do it for their college transcripts. Okay. But now you're seeing more and more kids getting engaged. You're seeing the Occupy Wall Street kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. You're seeing a lot of youth engagement across the country. And national service is really becoming an important aspect of what kids do these days. Okay, I'm going to switch to another publication that you're uh, acquainted with, Exempt Magazine. I've seen it. Um, and oh, and by the way, the nonprofit Times issue I was referring to is June 1st of this year. Um, the Exempt Magazine, uh, bright, bright lights and big stars, uh, challenged um, charities are reaching out to celebrities more. You're seeing more of this now? Well, not only are we seeing more of it, but so much of unfortunately, big charity is being tied to celebrity. And that can have its good points uh, and its bad consequences points. Consequences if the Especially celebrity... When Charlie Sheen goes to jail again. Down. Yeah. 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 That, that can be a problem. And in years gone by, if you're a celebrity went to jail, it was a problem. Maybe these, these, these days, it's actually might actually be an enhancement to some of what, some of what they do. But the the challenge with, with, there are, there are a lot of challenges with working with celebrity. Obviously, the obvious ones are the arrests and the the, the public relations nightmares. Right. But also just getting them to uh, to go to these uh, events, it gets expensive. Oh, John Doe is going to show up for free. But he's got an entourage. He's got to pay. You've got to pay for it. Um, You've got to pay for the first class flight. You've got to pay for the first class hotel, and it can get very expensive. There are some celebrities who are salt of the earth human beings, like George Clooney. He will do anything you want if he signs on. He's there, and he's there for free. And that doesn't mean a first class room. He'll buy his own room. He'll buy his own flight. Okay. And, he, and he's one of those terrific human beings. But there are others who uh, will demand have a very high list of demands. Okay, but what are some of the upsides? Of, of the of the celebrity, what do they bring? Well, bringing it back to uh, mobile giving and and back to uh, special events. You can pack a room with Lady Gaga. 
and the Robin Hood Foundation here in New York City did that just the other day. They, I think they, they think the number was eighty-seven million dollars that they raised. Uh, in that event, holy cow! You, in one so, night. So they had they had Lady Gaga at their right. at their gala, and they raised eighty-seven million dollars. Yeah, it was about eighty million bucks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, rounding. Um, but the, but the amazing thing about it was they had Lady Gaga and Martha Stewart in the same room, and nobody got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> they play nice together. Oh, at least in public. In public. Um, I see uh, a column. Uh, is this a regular feature? Human resources, donor diversity. What 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 are we seeing around donor diversity and human resources? The, did I scare you? Do you want to read it up first? And no, 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 no. Should I pause? The, 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 okay. <laughs> we look like a little, you have to little realize that I'm, I'm working on seven okay. different issues at one time. Not only do we have the print, but we've got five e-letters. So sometimes the, right. the mental Rolodex it takes a while to go back and okay. remember what this we did. Because that, that actually came out back in February. So. Oh, okay. So I'm already working on September. February is when you worked on it, yes. All right. Can you say anything about donor diversity? Yeah. Uh, well, nonprofits are working very, very hard to move the donor base to broaden the donor base. I mean, for years and years, the, the backbone of the, the giving was done by white females in their 70s who would get a, a piece of mail and said, give to the Red Cross or give to the Salvation Army or give to whomever, and they would dutifully write a check. Well, it's time for charities to start broadening that, that, that base. And we're seeing in communities of color, uh, ethnic communities, more and more nonprofits going into those communities and trying to reach in and trying to broaden their appeal to those communities. Because if every poll that you've ever seen is when you ask somebody why they gave, the answer is because you ask. Nobody's asking in those communities. For years and years and years, nobody asked in those communities. So now charities are finding ways to ask within those communities and are building out the diversity of their of their donor base. Okay. Um, and in the uh, exempt magazine issue I was referring to is uh, June, July of... Uh June, July of 2011, this says. That was last year's, yeah. This is last year. Oh, it was on your table today. We but, get, we have a lot of things over there. <laughs> it's a good thing we didn't dig too deep. Or we would have found 2006, and then I really would have put you on the spot. Well, you would have found Jimmy Hoffa, too. All right. <laughs> we went back a year. What's uh, what's in the pipeline? What's coming up? Uh, we're doing a terrific piece on the next cover of Exempt on uh, the border wars and the, uh, the Mexican drug wars and what the impact that they're having on charities along the Texas and Arizona border. What are you seeing there? Well, Danger. There are a lot of people who are coming across the border for medical help, medical care. Social human services organizations are just strapped along the border because people are coming across seeking help and just trying to get out of the out of the, the massacres that are going on just a hundred yards over the border. And then the legal issues of, of serving that population and treating that population? Or well, the, the, the legal issues are not so much the treating of them. If they show up at your doorstep, if they show up at a hospital, they will be treated. The question okay. becomes, then it becomes dicey about the immigration status, and it, does immigration get called? And that's a whole other bag of worms that they're, they're dealing with right now. But right now, they're dealing with the money issues because they're coming, people coming across the border need to be treated. They need to be fed. They need to be housed because there's a war going on in their community. And you can hear the gunshots at night. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What else? What else coming up? Uh, coming up, we have the Power and Influence Top 50 coming up. We 15th annual NPT Power and Influence Top 50. That's the August one issue. Okay. Um, every year we we announce who the 50 most influential people in the sector are. I'm not on the list, incredibly. Um, Am I? Uh, no, time. Sorry. Not yet. Not we're, yet. We're, we're, there's still time. It doesn't come out till August. Yeah, but I'm the editor of the publication, and I don't get on the list. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we've got. Right, we both got screwed. And we, we, there's the we have a gala for the 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 nominees or okay. the, in yeah. September, and are it's going to be an interesting list again this year. Are these all people working in charities, or are they philanthropists giving to charities, or both, or what? Neither. Uh, they have to be executives working in the charity okay. at the time okay. that we, ha we the, the issue comes out. So they have to be working. in in the charity, August one, when the when the list comes out. Okay, and they're nominated by their organizations. No, we have a kitchen cabinet. How uh, does this work? Explain. We have. We've been doing it for 15 years, so about Janu first week in January, second week in January, a letter goes out to all the former winners. It's that okay, who did we miss? 
who do you think we should be putting on this list? Okay. If you've been on the list before, you're automatically renominated. That doesn't mean you're going to get on the list. So we look at those lists. Uh, we talk. We have the contributing editors to the Nonprofit Times, who we we talk to them about who they think we should be talking to. Then we get a pool of about three to four hundred names, and it, over the time, over a couple of months, we whittle it down to 51, 52. Okay. And, and then it gets to 50, and then we publish. And what criteria do you use? What, what are you looking for? We're looking for people who are moving the industry in a specific area and putting together programs that can be used as a bridge nationally and programs that can be implemented in other organizations. Uh, people who have enough girth in the industry that they can get something done and move it. And they can only, they don't have to have been in the sector for 100 years. If they come up with a new idea in the last past couple of years and they've vaulted to the top of the list, that we've, we've had those people. Yeah. For example, Scott Harrison at Charity Award was on the list and they've only been around for a couple of years. Right, right. Okay. 18 years as uh, editor-in-chief. What, what concerns you about the, the charity community? Oh, regulation. Uh, getting getting more burdensome? It, not only is it getting more burdensome, but I, it's getting to the point where there is a blurring between the charitable sector, the federal government, and local governments that are trying to uh, regulate the sector as well. I mean, everybody knows that there's, there's been a recession, there's been a financial crunch, and all this property is tax exempt, and so there are payments in lieu of taxes going on throughout the country. But if you look at the way that the Congress and some state uh, legislatures are looking at the charitable sector, mm -hmm. it's clear that they don't understand it. And nobody's out there making it clear to them that, no, this is what the nonprofit sector does. We don't do that. Or this is the nonprofit sector. There, there are some lines and walls between what we do and what the government does and what, and what the state government does. And I'm getting more and more concerned as days go by that the charitable sector is going to get even more regulated, be forced to do even more things that they're not supposed to be doing. You know, if you look at California, they now have the B Corporation. Well, this is for for-profit companies, for-profit companies that want a special designation because they want to do good within their communities. Yes, so? Yeah. So yeah. if you want to do good, do good. I mean, look at Newman's Own, a terrific company. They wanted to give back to their community. They started a foundation. Profit from the company goes to the foundation. Money gets put out. Mm -hmm. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with the way that's done. Why do you need a speci special designation? No, Newman's Own doesn't want this designation. No, no, right, I'm just right. using them as an example of a yeah. sterling example. Of if you want to do good, make your money, give it to the foundation, give it to the community. Why do you need a, a special, special corporate, corporate, yeah, corporate entity yeah. called the B Corporation? You want that because that's just the first step. Then the next step, five years from now, is going to be, oh, maybe we should get some tax exemption on the property they have, or maybe we should get um, some relief on the payroll taxes that we're paying to the people who work in our companies, because we do good to after To the extent all. that we're doing good, we yeah. deserve yeah. A, a, a proportional break in taxes, etc. Oh, very interesting. So right. uh, that's that's the real danger that I okay. see. Okay, we're going to watch that. Thank you. Paul Clollery is Vice President and Editorial Director of NPT Publishing Group, which includes, as we talked about, Nonprofit Times and Exempt Magazine, 18 years in the post. Paul, it's a real pleasure. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for being a guest. This is Tony Martin, Nonprofit Radio Coverage of Fundraising Day 2012, hosted by AFP, the Greater New York City Chapter. <laughs>